Welcome to the Right Club Podcast, where the focus is on helping you, the real estate investor, advance to the next level. And now let's join this week's hosts and share ways for you to customize your life. I retired from the nine to five job October of 2020. And I actually didn't even have a plan then. I was just like, you know what, we'll see what happens. My current portfolio was doing fine. If, you know, I, I took some time to think what I wanted to do next, uh, why not? And, you know, I was, I was 36 and I don't think I could do nothing for the rest of my life, but I really, really wanted to have that freedom. Um, but I'll tell you with freedom and with more time actually comes new opportunities and opportunities that you probably wouldn't have been able to even consider uh, or that may not have been presented to you if you were still busy doing a nine to five. So, so I think it really actually opened some new doors. Uh, and, uh, and then I got into some development and now I'm doing some like bigger conversion projects for the Burr stuff and building a resort and everything in between. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's fun. It's their passion projects at this point. Yeah. And I love it. What you said, taking some time off to reflect is very important in anybody's journey. It's important if you're always busy, busy, you don't see, as you mentioned, what's going on and what's happening and what are the opportunities. So you mentioned a resort and I think you're partnering with some important people in your life as well. And as you mentioned, those opportunities probably you wouldn't have been available with a nine to five and all that. So can you tell us more about kind of that partnership to build that resort? How did this come about and all the details you want the dirt? (laughs) <laughs> the dirt. So, you know, before I actually left um, my job, I was working uh, at Lavazza, a great company. But before I actually left, I hired Harry James, who was on my podcast a couple of times and spoke at the Right Club a couple of times. And I'm just like, you know, you've got, he's got 30 plus years of experience, a ton of development experience, just something new I didn't know anything about. And I just love the philosophy that he's got on life um, and really customizing his life and everything else. And so, uh, just asked him, like, I don't know if you do this, you know, at all, but like, I would love to like, just spend extra time with you. Um, so I hired him as a mentor. I don't know if he, like, I think now he has a couple people that he, he does this with, but I don't think it was a thing in the past. And so he was nice enough to like, let me come into his circle and, you know, started learning about development. And then I decided to find a deal, um, called some realtors and negotiated actually a great piece of property that became and is becoming uh, some townhouses, six townhouses that were sold out in like six minutes um, because they're duplexes and they actually cash flow and they were a good deal. So they sold really fast. Um, And, you know, and from, from there, I kind of, you know, started looking for more opportunities uh, and the resort specifically came because um, I ended up finding this other Marina, um, and it was like a, a trailer park marina. And I was just like, this actually would be cool. And, you know, started looking into it, made an offer. And then on due diligence, realized it was in a floodplain uh, and everything was grandfathered. It would not have been grandfathered in. So all the trailers were like technically not legally supposed to be there. Anyways, lots of problems. But I'm like, it kind of like got me thinking of something unique, something new and the whole resort thing. And so I started Googling, um, not Googling, but searching on MLS, like specific zoning for resorts and actually found, it was on MLS, uh, a five acre piece of land and it was on the water on Shadow Lake and decided to get it under contract with a VTB uh, as well. And I said, hey, Harry uh, and Joe, Joe's the builder. He's uh, been you know building for, for 30 plus years, Harry's partner as well. Come in with me on this project um, and you know let's have some fun. Let's create something unique. And they thought I was crazy in the beginning. They really did. Uh, <laughs> but they, I think they're going to be excited. They're happy now. And I think they're excited about it all. But that's how it all came about. It was just, we just found the right land with the right zoning. We didn't have to rezone. Uh, and also ultimately you just get the building permits and you can start building. That sounds amazing. And I love that you use other people's money. So a VTB, uh, for those maybe newer, what is a VTB? And how does this apply? Like, is it the full amount or what's going on with the VTB? (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, I think this was listed on the MLS for like 1.29. We offered 1.1 back and forth a a little bit on that. And a vendor vendor take back essentially is when the seller is the bank. They are the lender. 
And, uh, and so he was open to it. But when you, when you buy more complex properties that can't be financed as easily, such as land, this was raw land minus uh, a house that was completely decrepit. We actually just uh, tore it down this week. Um, probably one of the worst houses I've ever seen. It was open to the elements for the last like 20 plus years. Oh my. Old resort. So you can only imagine the kind of mold uh, and everything that was inside that house. So, um, but you know, that was not financeable. And so it was either going to be uh, private money to, to close on it, our money to close on it, which, you know, as, as we all know, if you don't have to use your own money and you can use other people's money, then why not? Uh, but he was open to it. So he was open to, I think he's doing a VTB for 850. Uh, and then the rest we, we paid cash to close on. Um, it's a two year VTB at 5% interest only payments. Uh, and then the, the, there's two pieces of, of land, an acre and another acre next to it. And, uh, and so that was uh, something that we purchased for 450. Uh, and that's a, a residential um, lot. So we're going to be building a big cottage um, that's going to be part of the resort, but it's still on the residential type of zoning. So we're probably going to make it like a 20 person cottage uh, next to it. We bought, we bought that uh, lot next to it as well. Very smart to plan kind of your expansion as well. Uh, this is something you see a lot in shopping centers. Oftentimes there's the like the mall, the enclosed mall and then all kinds of land around it. So is that something else you've planned for your resort? Like what are their phases or how are you building it? Is it like one time and you're building a whole stretch or if it if it according to Harry if it was up to me it'd be one time and be done in three months but that's impossible <laughs> I know it's not realistic so uh it is it is going to be about a five-year project um and so phase one uh it's it's you know based on the septic tanks we could do one septic for three cottages so I think it's just going to make the most sense to do three cottages at a time because that's the one septic and just easier to plan those out so we'll have three cottages by the summer uh, and, uh, you know, obviously summer is high season. That's when you can get the big bucks. So we're going to stop, uh, and we're going to do three more either in the fall or in the early spring of 2023. And then we're going to get to nine cottages. So we're going to get into the woods. There's like five acres, maybe four and a half acres of wooded, uh, tree land. We're going to have some cottages in there as well. Um, but when it's all said and done, it is a five-year project. We're going to have a main reception area. So you can have like your weddings, your parties, we're going to have an infinity pool. We're going to have a rooftop gym. We're going to have some cool little pods in the, in the woods. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to take many, many years. Um, you do it in phases, but I think it is going to be completely, completely different than all the other resorts. For me, there's very little amount of resorts that I would want to go to, um, you know, in, in the cottage area rather than renting a cottage. There's one resort I really like. This is not in the cottage area, but it's, it's Wander, the resort in Picton. Beautiful. They charge like $1,000, $2,000 a night, but it is nice and high end. And I think this is going to be the same concept that we want to do. So we want to do a high end concept. Um, and to be honest, when I'm going somewhere and I want to take a, a nice vacation, um, I go to, if I do it like an all inclusive, I go to adults only resorts, you know, adults only, it's calm, it's different atmosphere. So that we're actually going to do an adults only resort uh, concept at ours as well. It'll be 16 plus. Um, so people can get away, right. Can get away and really truly relax. There's lots of resorts for kids. We love kids, but you know, we do want to have something completely unique that somebody can go to and feel like that, like adults only type of, you know, um, experience that they would, if they go to like Mexico or Dominican or something like that. Oh, that that's sounds amazing. Awesome. That's awesome. So when you're talking about cottages, there's a lot of different visuals that people come up with when they hear the word cottage. So how many bedrooms, you mentioned higher end amenities, you're comparing this to Wander Down and Picton, which I know is absolutely gorgeous. It's a stunning resort. Um, so, and you're also on Shadow Lake. So with the lake, what kind of boating and water recreation activities? Is this four season? Is it just two or three season? Like what are, what are, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're gonna actually make them year round. Um, and some of them are going to be themed. So, you know, inside, so outside they're going to look different and then inside, sorry, outside they're going to look the same, but then inside they're going to look different. So, if, you know, I think of like, if you go, for example, like to Trias, the winery, right? Um, in, in Ontario, in, uh, in Niagara, you know, you're at Trias because you've got the backgrounds and you've got some like Instagrammable specific pictures that people go to, to, you know, 
get pictures of themselves. And so we want to do something like that with the cottages so you, that people have that Instagrammable space and you know that they're at Inspire Beach Resort when they're at those cottages. But I think the other concept and, you know, again, it's fluid, it's always evolving, but the concept of having different themes inside the cottages, if I'm going somewhere and I have a great experience at the Canadian uh, cottage, and next time I want to go back and I want to go to the Winter Wonderland cottage, it's a whole different experience, but you know, it's easier to get clients that have a great time to come back another time and try a different experience versus the same thing over and over. Thanks for listening to the Right Club podcast, where the focus is on helping all levels of real estate investors advance to the next level and help you customize your life. Be sure to tune in next week at rightclub.com slash podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you get a few seconds, please rate the podcast wherever you're listening. It helps the show get noticed by others like you. And we truly appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe.